Today, I'm going to present my work, Playing for Kips, Understanding and Improving Linux Kernel Expert Reliability. This is a collaborated work from Arizona State University, Pennsylvania State University, University of Colorado Boulder, Sunso University, and Northwestern University. A Linux kernel heap exploit usually involves a victim object. The attacker will use vulnerabilities to override the victim object with attacker-controlled data. When the kernel tries to dereference the controlled data as the victim object, it allows the attacker to break the uh, security boundary and perform privilege escalation. However, in a typical kernel exploit, the object override does not succeed 100% of the time. In other words, the exploits are unreliable. We know it as a fact that Linux kernel exploits are dangerous because they affect millions of devices. But at the same time, they are also known to be unreliable. There are existing practices to improve exploit reliability. We call them exploit stabilization techniques. However, how to and when to use them heavily relies on personal expertise. So it is important for us to understand exploit reliability to evaluate the vulnerability severity. Unfortunately, this topic is not covered by existing works. To fill the gap, we want to study this problem. More specifically, we want to systematically study why Linux kernel heap-based exploits are unreliable. So to perform the systematic study, we want to uh, answer a few research questions. What are the commonly used exploit stabilization techniques? How effective are existing techniques? Are they as effective as expected? And why do existing techniques work? With the knowledge from the systematic study, can we find new ways to further improve exploit reliability? We designed a hybrid approach to answer the questions. First, we performed a qualitative interview on human experts and collect existing techniques from the experts. Then, we perform a quantitative experiment to measure the effectiveness of all the techniques. Then we investigate why and how do they work and use the knowledge to build a theoretical model to explain the problem. Then, we derive a new technique and a technique combination from the model to further improve exploit reliability. For the first step, we interviewed 11 Linux kernel security experts and collected five exploitation stabilization techniques, namely defragmentation, heap grooming, heap spray, and CPU pinning. Since there are two kinds of implementation of heap spray, we regarded them as two different te techniques. Then we collected 17 public exploits and strip away existing techniques employed in the exploits as the baseline exploits. Uh, and then we apply one single technique from the collected technique set to the baseline exploit to form the exploit variance. In total, we obtained 85 samples. The result of the quantitative experiment is summarized here. As you can see, overall speaking, multi-process heap spray Involve, improves exploit reliability the most significantly. And while all other techniques improve exploit reliability as expected, defragmentation as a stabilization technique somehow hurts reliability. We investigated further on this case. It turns out that defragmentation only improves exploit reliability for out-of-bound access exploits. And interestingly, if used incorrectly, it can significantly hurt reliability for other exploits. Based on our analysis, we summarize the life cycle of Linux kernel exploits as shown here. Typically, a Linux kernel heap exploit involves a context setup step, where it prepares system resources to trigger the vulnerability in the first step. After the vulnerability is triggered, there could be a time delay before the heap is actually corrupted. Then, for exploits that corrupt the allocator, it needs to restore the allocator back to its normal state before the kernel detects its anomaly. Finally, the exploit will trigger the payload and break the security boundary. Knowing the life cycle of the exploits, 
We then investigated when exploits can fail. It turns out that exploits can fail uh, in different periods in the life cycle if they use different exploitation techniques. For use out of free and double free exploits, as expected, the exploits may fail between the target object is freed and the allocator is restored back to its normal state. Interestingly, the success of out of bound access exploits aiming to override other objects is fully determined by its heap layout preparation step. In other words, their success is fully determined before even triggering the vulnerability. For out of bound access exploits aiming to hijack the free list, they can fail after triggering the vulnerability because they need to restore the corrupted allocator. We call these time windows that determine the exploit success the critical phases. They are highlighted in red in this model. In fact, we discovered that there are two types of critical phases. We call them slot critical and allocator critical. A heap-based kernel exploit has a target slot that it needs to occupy to be successful. For example, in out-of-bound access exploits, when the vulnerable object is allocated, the adjacent free slot becomes the target slot. If the target slot is accidentally occupied by other objects, the kernel might crashes after the overflow. For exploits that corrupt the allocator, they need to restore the allocator back to its normal state to be successful. For example, in a double free exploits, it wraps the linearly linked free list into a loop. When the kernel tries to use the free list, you will detect the anomaly and crashes. So these are the phases when exploits can fail. Now the question is, what is exactly causing the failures, such as obtaining the target slot? We concluded four factors for exploit failures. As expected, a non-initial heap layout can fail exploits that require non-heap layout. An unexpected heap, uh, heap usage from other processes or kernel components can fail exploits as well. Besides, we found out that the scheduler, which causes task migration, and the delayed operations in Linux kernel, which causes unpredict unpredictable corruption timing, also contribute to ex exploit failures. Now, putting pieces together, we have the full kernel heap exploit model. Based on the model, it is intuitive that exploit unreliability is related to the length of the critical phases. In other words, if we can reduce the length of the critical phase, we can improve exploit reliability. In our study, we identified that context switch, which is how Linux kernel implements the time sharing mechanism, can significantly prolong the critical phases. In a out-of-bound access exploit, if it happens after the target slot is open, the execution of other processes is included in the critical phase, which hurts exploit reliability. Naturally, one way to improve exploit reliability is to avoid context switch in critical phases. We achieved it by using the timestamp counter or TSC for short, as the context switch indicator. TSC is a CPU register that counts cycles since boot time. We can read TSC in a loop. If it detects a huge bump in the TSC value, that means the process is just enter a uh, fresh time slice. Then we can start the exploitation by allocating two objects autom uh, atomically without context switch in between. We evaluated this technique in two different workloads, as, and it is indeed effective, especially when the system is busy. Previously from the model, we identified four unreliability factors. In our study, we also noticed that each of them can be mitigated by existing techniques. It seems that unreliability factors are orthogonal to each other, and the techniques do not conflict with each other. Naturally, the question will be, what if we combine the techniques together? 
To perform the experiment, we apply all the applicable techniques on the baseline exploit and obtain the combo exploit variance. We then evaluated the combo technique. The results shows that the technique combination derived from our systematic study outperforms both the baseline exploit and the real-world exploits substantially. So in this work, we systematic, systematically studied the kernel heap exploit reliability problem. We proposed a model to explain the problem and guide future research. We also discovered a new technique and a technique combination to further improve exploit reliability. Our project is open sourced. The evaluation fr uh, framework and the exploits are dockerized. You can just run and play. Thank you, everyone. I'm ready to answer questions.